Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Asvine P50 Piston Filler. Asvine has come a long way since I first heard of them when they sent me this Asvine V169 Vacuum Filler Skeleton Pen almost two years ago. But since the V169, they've come out with some remarkable fountain pens, two of which will make my best of 2023 list. Within the last month, they've introduced two new models, both piston fillers. One is the reimagining of the original V169 as a cigar-shaped piston filler, the P80. You'll be seeing this pen in a review coming very soon. The other is a cigar-shaped Asvine P20 called the P50. So let's take a look at this pen right now. Well, they're coming by the truckload now, or boatload. Another package from China. And unlike the last one, I know what this one is. The Asvine P50. Let's open this package. So there's the Hongjin wrench. This will be my third one. And this is the P50. So this is the acrylic. And there it is. Beautiful cigar-shaped pen. P50 on the back. It's in this cloud type acrylic a little bit of chatoyancy in the white parts and there's the nib this is a medium and there's the ink window and of course the piston that piston where i think we're going to see it in a lot of different models i'll show the parts and features of this pen some measurements and then provide a writing sample and then i'll talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen the Asvine P50 is a cigar-shaped piston filler, and the P20 is Asvine's conical-shaped piston filler, the shape being very reminiscent of the Moon Man M800, which in turn is the spitting image of the Leonardo Memento Zero. This sounds like a job for the future King of England. Asvine have another cigar-shaped acrylic pen, and that's this Asvine V126, but this is a vacuum filler. And they have a cigar-shaped titanium and clear demonstrator piston filler in this P36. Lest anyone be left out, they've just recently released this Asvine P80 piston filler. So Asvine has their bases covered. Or should I say Asvine has their Asvine covered. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Do you prefer piston fillers? Well, they now have four of them. And do you prefer vacuum fillers? Well, you have a choice of the acrylic V126 or the brass skeleton V169. You want a Leonardo Momento Zero slash Moonman M800 slash P20 in a vac filler? Well, I hear you. I want one too. Wait for it. Wait for it! <laughs> I predict it will be next and would be called the Asvine V136. Until then, let's look at this new P50. From the top, we see the cigar-shaped top finial, which screws down into the cap and holds the clip and clip ring in place, and then is glued. The chrome metal clip has a tapering design reminiscent of the Kaigaloo 316 fountain pen's clip. It's very stiff and difficult to use. The cap tapers up to a wide chrome metal cap band that has a laser etched top border and brand name as Vine and model number on the back, P50. The top of the barrel is a chrome ring that is the bottom of the ink window and the barrel tapers all the way down to a chrome ring which separates the barrel from the blind cap piston knob and that ends in a rounded cigar shape. The turned acrylic is a blend of translucent and chatoyant white acrylic and an opaque, very flat, pale blue acrylic. The effect is of a cloudy sky. It doesn't exactly thrill me. The cap unscrews with one, two full rotations to reveal the ink window, long tapering section made of the same acrylic, and the number six size steel medium nib and black plastic feed. The section is very comfortable and long and has a large step-up flare towards the nib. The cap threads and the step up to the barrel are not sharp or severe. Let's get a closer look at this nib. There is some border ornamentation, a script M in a circle for medium, and Asvine deeply engraved into it. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping, and the section does not unscrew. Inside of the cap, you see a step milled into the acrylic that meets up with the top of the section, 
to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap posts, but not deeply or securely, and it sits on top of the piston knob so it's possible to inadvertently turn the knob and spill ink out of the nib. The pen is also relatively long posted. Unposted, the pen is nicely comfortable in the hand. I bought this pen from Sally, who runs the Etsy shop Easy Buy and it is listed for $41.57 Canadian, which is roughly $30 US, and is available in four colorways, red marble, blue marble, brown marble, and yellow marble, and three nib sizes, E, F, F, and M. There were four Bach nib options, E, F, F, M, and B, but they're all sold out. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Asvine P50 piston filler with a Pen BBS 308, an Asvine V126 vacuum filler, an Asvine P36 titanium piston filler, and a Moonman P136. Oh, so Asvine won't be able to use that name. <laughs> oh, wink, wink, say no more. Snap, snap, grin, grin, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I draw your attention to the V126. See how beautifully it posts? So Asvine do know how to make a pen that posts properly. Just saying. The Asvine P50 cap does post, but it always falls off when it rubs against my hand while I'm writing. So I just write with it unposted. Since the Titanium P36 is a demonstrator, let's demonstrate how not to post a piston filler, shall we? See, the cap is posted right on that knob, and you know what will happen when you turn it. An inky accident waiting to happen. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper. And this is the Asvine P50 piston filler, and it has a number six size steel medium nib. Let's check the wetness. This nib is nicely wet, and it's very smooth. with just a touch of feedback. And the ink is Pelican Edelstein Sapphire. And as to line variation, well, you can actually squeeze out a little bit, but as you can see, it's railroading on me. Well, I'll talk about that in a moment. I don't think it's the nib or the feed. I think it's the ink. So the nib has a little bit of bounce to it, which is unusual for a Chinese steel nib. And the line the nib makes is a 0 0.5 millimeter, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. On my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's actually fairly smooth, a lot drier, and a lot thinner. And some quick writing. Now, you can see the issues here. I mentioned earlier, I don't think that that's the feed doing that because I cleaned it out well before I inked it. I think it is the ink. It writes nicely for a while. And once you've written with it for a while, then it starts to skip and then it gets back to juicy again. So I think the feed is being starved of ink. I knew Pelican Sapphire was a drier ink than others. So here's my home solution for making the ink flow better. I put six milliliters of distilled water in this little vial. Then I dipped a toothpick in some Dawn dish soap until it was completely coated. Then I dropped the toothpick completely in the water, 
put the cap back on and agitated. Then I took the cap off and let it sit until the bubbles dissipated. Now I have six milliliters of slightly soapy distilled water. I'm going to empty the pen of ink and then rinse it clean and come back. And now I've cleaned the pen out. So the ink chamber is clear and the nib is clean and dry. Now I'm gonna take my soapy water solution and I'm going to fill the pen with the soapy water and then expel it again. Save that for later. And I'm gonna take the nib off, dry the nib assembly, push that piston back up again, and dry up any excess with a cotton swab. Put the nib back in. That should leave me with some soapy residue. Not water so much, but soapy residue on the inside of that piston and the, the feed and the nib. Now let's ink the pen back up again with the drier ink. Now let's try that writing sample again. I'm just going to keep writing to see whether it skips. So far so good. No issues whatsoever now. My theory is that the slightly soapy water will coat the inside surfaces of the nib feed and the piston. Then when the ink is added, the soapy residue will act as a surfactant. Simply put, a surfactant breaks up the surface tension and allows the liquid to flow easier. Inks that have a higher amount of saturation can have flow issues. I wouldn't try this on an already wet and flowing ink like an Orochizuku because you might have your ink flowing where you don't want it to. But suffice it to say, this little experiment worked. I should put a name on this stuff. How about Professor Doug's Double Secret Sauce for Ink Flow Fluid? I like it. <laughs> Trips right off the tongue. Then as of this moment, they're on double secret probation. Double secret probation, sir? So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, like most Asvine pens, it's solidly built, writes well out of the box, and has a great ink capacity. I like that the pen comes with the wrench instead of being sold separately. There are some things I don't like so much, however. I'm not fond of any of the four color options. If they came out with the P50 in this amber or this galaxy finish, like on these P20s, I'd think seriously about getting one. Probably two. And I think that this cigar-shaped pen should post better than this. If they could post it like the Asvine V126 vacuum filler, which posts beautifully, that'd be great. That would be great. Okay. And the clip, although nicely shaped, is way too stiff to use. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.